Comrades, greetings, I am Admiral Andre, and welcome to the race for the White House. Yes, it's happening. This is an old game and I have to say it's quite a bit aged at this point because it's fixed to the 2012 presidential election in the US. Obviously a lot has happened since then, so the issues have changed and the candidates have changed as well, but with a little tweaking we can still get some enjoyment and value out of this game. Now, I know the uh, election of our own has just finished with the uh, uh, Real Politics series and Turkey has come out on top, a surprise victor. So the whole election business made me think of this game again and I thought why don't we give it a quick go. I think it will be at most one or two episodes. It's, it's quite fast paced and then we can turn to the new real politics so let's see if i can actually win this thing and uh, if you'll have a new candidate i think uh, well i don't want to say too much but i think i might be a better one than the present uh, president but in any case let's play so we have simple choice single player and here is the part that i was talking about Hillary Clinton is here, you can see, uh, yes, the figures are not the most realistic, of course, but they didn't have Donald Trump. Of course, it's quite easy to put him in the game, you just change the name, put his slogan in, but in terms of the faces, you can see there weren't that many choices, only four, and that's the one that there's Mitt Romney, they call him Mick, Mick Romney, but... Uh, that's the closest one to Trump, so we're going to pretend that that's Trump. Make America great again. Let's hope not, but in any case, I'm going to be a third candidate. Uh, this will be quite strange because in the US there isn't usually a third candidate that competes on the same level of the main two. Of course you do have multiple other candidates, but they usually remain very small. So we're going to see if we can change this whole system. So I'll say other, and I've tried this already a few times, so you can see I'm there as the Green Party and the third position party. All you do is you click on any one of them, like the United Party, and you say edit. You can put your name in and your slogan, and there's only a few choices with a face, unfortunately. So I always go for this one because I guess that's the most similar. I don't have grey hair yet, thank goodness. And uh, yeah, I don't think I look like that either. So we go with that one. So in terms of the party here, it makes no choice whatsoever. Really, it's your decisions that will change the course of the election. So I think for this, we can say, should we go Green Party? I know Green Party is a big deal in some places in Europe. Third position party, I have no idea if there is such a thing in real life. But uh, that could also work because it's a third way now. We don't go with the Democrats or the Republicans. Maybe I'll do that. I don't know if there is an existing third position party, but obviously I have no affiliation with them. I just think the name sounds nice. So uh, we represent the third alternative. Let me just interject here. This is uh, Admiral Andre from the future. Of course, I only Google this after I make the episode, so let me put this caveat in here. I was looking, is there such a thing as a third position party? And of course there is, and of course they're promoting white nationalism. And uh, what was the other thing I saw? Racist Southern California skinheads. Now let me let me take a leaf out of uh, Barack Obama's book here and say, let me be clear. I do not have any affiliation with this party and I never will and I did not even know they existed. I was thinking now let me just be very certain while I'm editing the video and just quickly look them up and of course it's a bad thing. Ah, good grief, I just can't win. Anyway, so again let me be clear the way that I use third position party in this let's play is a totally different thing from this real life one. So I think I can't be any clearer than that. So let's get back into the game and just uh, just keep that in mind. So I click on that and edit. And uh, yes, you see the faces there. I'll just go with the 
third one there and first name I'll just say Admiral and of course Andre. We'll keep the slogan a new vision for America because that is what we embody here. So click OK and say I think I have to click on it again and yes there we go so now there's the three candidates now of course this is the 2012 election but we'll pretend it was the 2016 election so we'll just use our imagination a little bit click OK and would I like to share this poster no okay that's interesting I didn't see that option before we have two campaign types a shorter one and a longer one and I think of course, in real life, the campaigning lasts much longer than even these few months. It sometimes goes up to a year or more, really. But uh, for this game, it's better if we keep it short, because otherwise there's a lot of repetition. So we'll say we start in October, and of course the election is on the 6th of November. Game mode, we'll say realistic, because there is no equal start for that third party. And then difficulty intermediate. I don't think I can win on intermediate. I don't think I have so far, but I'll give it a go. Maybe we can convince some voters to, to vote for me. So let's go. Okay, and there we see our map of the US. We can move it around a little bit, but not too much. And uh, let's see, I've got a million dollars, which I miraculously managed to raise. Let's say uh, the viewers on this channel were fortunate enough to be able to donate that money to me and there I am now let's go to the HQ this is totally I'll say it's random it isn't really but it depends on which candidate you pick so you don't have any control over this so our headquarters at the moment is in Nevada so we'll pretend that as a candidate I come from Nevada of course I don't come from any of these places so it's as good as any then this will earn us a little bit of money each day, but of course not a lot. Nevada's not got a lot of population, so we really want a big HQ in one of the more populated states like California or Florida or New York. So if I can just click here all, we can see where the other candidates have their headquarters. It looks like at the moment the uh, Trump headquarters is in Colorado of all places and uh, Hillary's headquarters is in Illinois so that's interesting I think both would be in New York but again this doesn't represent reality so I'll close that and we have to be careful with the money because there's a lot we have to do with it I think as a first step I have to hire some security because the other candidates will play dirty definitely I've seen it many times so security, hire a security service to monitor the entrances and ensure safety at your next rally. This is important because if you don't do this and you go to a rally, there will often be something like a bomb scare or a bunch of hooligans who try to disrupt. And of course, the other candidates are behind it and they want us to be, you know, disrupted there. So I have to hire these people. This will last for the whole of the campaign, so it's it's fine. Then online reputation, they will also try to slander me online. One week contract with a company, so we'll have to renew this unfortunately, that specializes in e-reputation management to protect your e-reputation and get rid of any negative content or rumors. I don't know if I have to do this at the moment. I think maybe I'll leave it for right now. We just have to be careful with the money here. Demining, I have no idea what that is. Hire a demining security and response. Oh, so okay, they just make sure that there's safety at the, at the, that's the bomb scare thing. So this I have to do and this is at the next 10 locations. So once it's up, I just have to check again. Finance, I can't afford that. Otherwise, you see, this is they, they manage your finances. Otherwise, the other candidates might accuse me of fraud. So, uh, of course, I can't do this right now. So we have six hundred and twenty thousand dollars left. I think we'll leave it at that. At least now I can go to the rallies without being disrupted. 
Now, if we have a look down here, what's this button? Oh, yes, this is just where you see all the states and how they support you. You see, we have very marginal support all over the place right now, about 1%. I don't know how clear this yellow will be on YouTube. We can say these are again, you know, uh, some people who've seen me on YouTube and they're intrigued. So there's 1% here and there and so on, but not really. In effect, there's no one that's supporting us at the moment. Then ads, we'll just have a look. This is where we spend most of our money. A TV spot will cost us a lot and we have to run it on a state by state basis. So if you want to hit all 50 states plus DC, then you're going to have to spend really a lot of money here. You can also choose the slogan for your television ad. And the more slogans you have, the more expensive it will be. But the TV spots are actually very effective because they really bombard the population in a particular state. I think if you are from the US, you'll probably know what I'm talking about. These TV ads, you just get absolutely inundated with them. In any case, let's go and have a look at this just quickly. Of course, the most important states are California and New York because they have the most delegates. So let's just see if I pick the two of them. What happens? What's the cost? So right now it's zero because we don't have a slogan yet. Let's see. Let's take a positive message. I'm not going to break down the other candidates. We take the high road. Uh, let's say I, with your vote, I will defend your rights. So that will cost us about two hundred thousand dollars. Let's pick another one. Time to bring back sanity to American politics. I think that's something we can all get behind. So let's accept that and just start sending it. With your vote, I will defend your rights. It's time to bring back sanity to American politics. I approve this message. I approve this message. You'll, you'll hear sometimes the uh, sounds get cut off there. It's just one of the quirks of this game, but it's also sometimes very cheesy. But in any case, it at least gives us the opportunity to see our ads as well. So the next step, I think now we have to start going to events. Um, we can build another HQ which will help us with money, but I don't know if we can actually afford that right now. Let's just go to New York. Oh, we can get a small office. We can always upgrade it. You see it earns us $2,000 a day through small donations and so on. I think we should actually. Let's do that. Let's also get one in California. Okay, no more money. So now we go back to the events. You can see the stars here. They represent how important these events are for your public image. At least that's how I understand it. So you can go to any of them. You'll see they have different dates, but really we want to be hitting the high level ones. Let's just have a look. It's October the 8th right now. So time will move on once we go and visit these places. So effectively the game is paused right now. So if I organize it by time, we'll see the first deadline is a high school in Los Angeles. This could be a good place for us to go to speak, but I want to see if we'll be back by the 9th of October. I think we may, I don't know. I don't know how strict these deadlines are, but I think it will be just safer for us to go speak at the Pentagon. No, 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 I don't want to click there. So let's go to the Pentagon. Although we are on the West Coast anyway. Hmm so difficult in any case sometimes these events come up more than once there's a tent city in seattle as well let's go there actually that's a bit more high level and then i just have to pick something to speak about i'll just increase the volume a little bit there's some music but hopefully uh just so that you can hear me speak and then give me you know give that cheesy smile at the end a homeless encampment of up to 100 persons sponsored by several housing organizations. The camp was created in May 2004 and limits itself to places of worship in eastern King County outside of Seattle. Now we have to decide what promises we're going to make. And depending on that, we'll make some people happy and we'll make others angry. So unfortunately, there's no pleasing everyone. I think I'm just going to go with what I think I should say. 
and what I generally would do in real life. Of course, uh, it's not always as simple as these issues would make it seem, but let's say I want to increase the federal minimum wage. Economic development is not happy with me, nor are the employers, but purchasing power, social equality and social issues, the, the people who care about those things, they really love this. So I'm going to say yes. Do you really believe that someone can live on a salary that pays $7.25 an hour? This is way too meager for anyone to live on, and it's a question of social justice. I believe the government should protect our low-income workers who work just as hard as anyone else. There's that smile. He always does that at the end with a photo op. Nothing I can do about that. So we can see down here in the news, Donald Trump has, there was something before this. So he pledges to establish charter schools, but he also said something about supporting the death penalty. So we can already see that there, Donald Trump is being Donald Trump. I don't actually know where he stands on the death penalty in real life, but doesn't really matter for the purposes of this game. So the Pentagon thing has disappeared, so we missed that one, but it's okay. I think it's not a real problem. So let's go to Mount Rushmore. There is an event happening there, and then we'll work our way towards the, the East Coast. A, a specially organized visit to Mount Rushmore, touring site and making patriotic speech defending liberty. So what can we say here? Uh, so this is pretty much about like foreign policy and citizenship and so on. Decrease the presidential salary. I also have to think about what the most people will like to hear. I think, let's see, allow illegal immigrants to remain in the US and become citizens if they meet certain requirements. That'll get a lot of votes, but also a lot of enemies, I think. Stop the US from continuing the su to support the embargo against Cuba. I, th I think we're going to do that. Let's take this one. It's not that I necessarily agree with that in real life. I just think that's something that could be uh, spoken about more. So Cuba and the people who support Cuba will like that. Pacifism, foreign affairs, trade will also of course like that. But the defense people will be a bit upset. Our embargo against Cuba has been the longest enduring embargo that we've had in the world. Why is it still there? People need to realize that it is mostly only served to hurt the Cuban people who deserve to live in a thriving society. This embargo is unjust and it must be lifted. And there is that smile again. Creepy smile, but anyway. Okay, so the other candidates... and I'm going to do what I can to help you win the election. I'm going to make a donation right away to a pack that supports you. Good luck. Hey, that's fantastic. Sometimes people will call up really wealthy people like this film producer, and if they like what they hear, then they will donate a lot of money to your cause. I think that is uh, generally what we can see in real life as well although it might not happen like this where they call you up and say here's some money but in any case this is a very welcome thing so this is pretty much how we make the most of our money I think so the next thing let's have a look what are the next events there's an Amnesty International thing happening in New York I think let's go there A cocktail at Amnesty International headquarters, uh, two hours and so on. I don't really look at these things, but the importance is definitely something to look at. If you see something in, in yellow like this, then that means one of the other candidates already said this. So you can say it as well, but the impact will be diminished because it looks like you're just copying them. Let's see, what about opposing the death penalty? Um, empty Guantanamo Bay. I think that that's a good thing to do. Also, maybe stop just for a moment. Repeal the Patriot Act. Homeland Security and the War on Terror will hate that, but individual liberties and human rights are supporting it. I'm going to do this. Let's repeal the Patriot Act. 
This draconian law was never about public safety. We've been manipulated into passing a law that tramples on our most cherished constitutional liberties. I believe it's the patriotic duty of every American to oppose the Patriot Act. If I'm elected president, I will repeal it. Right, there's the photo op again. And it's the 12th of October already, so you can see no one is supporting us yet. That doesn't mean there's no people uh, who support us. That's just the states. No, we, are, we don't have a majority of support in any state yet. Trump is making inroads though. Uh, he's going to surpass Hillary quite soon, I think. So we're going to have to step up our game here. He's even taken over New York at this stage. Of course, public opinion will change quite quickly. Let's just have a look at our support right now. California, we now have 15% of the support there. What about New York? Only 12%. I think it's quite clear that I'm not going to win this election. <laughs> but I can still give it a go. Let's actually build a bigger HQ. Um, let me just see. How do I do that again? Go to HQ and then click on California and just improve that. That will give us more money. And maybe I can put a small one in Florida. I think it also helps our support a little bit. So now we're broke, basically. There's a Catholic fundraising luncheon happening in Silver Spring, Maryland. Um, they're not going to give me money because I haven't said anything in support of religion at this stage. And I don't think I will, actually. So let's skip that one. Let's go to the film festival in Rutland, Vermont. Is this the right one? No, that's a weekend market. There. So this is a women's film festival focusing on controversial issues such as domestic abuse, sexual assault, body image, religion and more. So let's look at what the relevant issues are for this uh, venue. Support legalizing prostitution, oppose women to serve in combat. Let's say... I'm going to defend existing pro-choice legislation. Morality for some reason hates me. Well, uh, of course we can define morality in different ways. But in any case, we'll make more friends, I think, than... Well, it depends. In some states we'll make more enemies, but that's okay. Ah, there's a failed bomb attempt in Rutland, Vermont, before the arrival of Admiral Andre. Now, this is a failed bomb attempt. They secured the area. I wonder if we'll still get to speak. Probably not, but obviously this is one of my enemies now. No. Pro-choice does not mean pro-abortion. The decision to have an abortion will always be a difficult one. Laws against abortion do not stop abortion. They simply make it less safe and even fatal. Moreover, I believe it's the woman that needs to make this difficult decision, not the government. I agree with that, not the government. People, uh, people should make choices like that without the government interfering. In any case, there's a gala with CEOs now in San Francisco, and that is a super important one. Trump has surpassed Hillary now, so I think things are going the way they did in real life, although it wasn't as obvious as this until the end. I think probably no one will support us in this gala yet, because I didn't speak about business yet, which is probably unfortunate, but... I still have to go. Maybe someone will donate something. Let's see. Fundraising gala organized by a select group of large corporation CEOs. All I can do is thank them for inviting me. And then hopefully they will give me some money. First of all, I want to thank you for such a kind invitation. I'm very pleased to be here. I guarantee you that with me in the presidency, my administration will always keep you in mind and support you in all circumstances. Together, we can build this great American dream. <coughs> nope. Just coughing from the audience. <laughs> Zero dollars. That's tragic. Uh, you see, in that case... I just wanted to tell you that the statements you've made during your campaign have really made an impact on me. I support your candidacy, and I'm going to do what I can to help you win the election. I'm going to make a donation right away to a PAC that supports you. 
Good luck. Ah, libertarian billionaire. I think he's supposed to represent someone in real life, but I don't know who that is. In any case, we got a bit of money from him. So even though the uh, CEOs didn't like me, uh, that still worked out okay. So there's a television debate happening uh, the 16th, so tomorrow evening at 9 p.m. And there are three of these debates. One, the first one, I think, is between Hillary and Trump. The second one is between me and Trump. And the last one is between me and Hillary. So we all have a chance to debate each other. Now, I think this is quite important to win this debate. They will tell you if you're winning or losing or at the end who, who won the debate. But that can possibly sway things. So I'm going to have to be... How can I say? I'm going to have to say some sensational things here, the, the things that I think most people will agree with, just so that they can uh, basically get behind me. Now, that can be quite difficult. Let's just see if I can at least beat Trump. Now, I have to make it to this event. Uh, missing it would be a disaster. So, it's a televised debate at Hofstra University, and I think Wolf Blitzen is going to be moderating. Let's have a look. I'm a victim of fraud, so funds have vanished, so this is because I didn't have the uh, accountants supporting me. But luckily that bomb thing didn't go through because I hired the security. So if I didn't, I wouldn't have been able to speak there. Probably when I close this, I'll start the televised debate. Let's have a look. Oh no, he has to come here first. Good evening and welcome to the second U.S. presidential debate. The rules here are simple. Both candidates will take turns addressing key issues that I will ask them. Obviously, the time allowed for each candidate will be strictly balanced. We have also implemented a new instant polling system, which will assess the impact of each candidate's responses on viewers and somewhat predict the winner of tonight's debate. Society has been intensely debating issues related to the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender communities. Where do you stand on these issues? Okay, so I go first. I have 30 seconds to choose my answer. I'm going to say I favor legalizing gay marriage. That sends a strong message. And uh, yes, reinstate, don't ask, don't tell. I don't think any of these others would, would really go. So that's the one I'm going for. Legalizing gay marriage is an important issue of fairness. All Americans should be treated equally. It's also about the golden rule. We should all treat others the way that we would want to be treated. Marriage confers a number of benefits that we are all entitled to. Thank you. Let us return to our other candidate. What are your views regarding this subject? This is a very sensitive topic, and I <laughs> look at my face. Disagree with me, but my view is that marriage itself can only be a relationship between a man and a woman. Therefore, I believe our marriage laws should reflect this. Thank you. Now, let's address the next issue. Currently, 20% of the federal budget is allocated to the Defense Department. Defense is a key issue for America in many other ways as well. What do you propose regarding this subject of defense and the military? Well, I think America must be strong on all fronts, given the multiple threats that we face today. So by increasing our annual naval shipbuilding rate from 9 to 15 ships, I'll reverse the current hollowing of our Navy, and as president, our Navy will shine as an unchallengeable power on the high seas. Thank you. Now it's your turn. What are your views on this subject? He's ahead of me right now. I want to say we need to reduce the size of the military. Uh, probably I won't get a lot of support from that. Let's just have a look. Adopt a non-military intervention policy. Withdraw the troops from Afghanistan. What about this? Call for reduction of nuclear arsenals around the world. That's something I think most people can get behind. Well, the world has seen the insanity and the horrors unleashed by nuclear weapons. All nations in the UN Security Council and outside the Council should have but one goal, a world without nuclear weapons. We must work together to reduce our nuclear arsenals around the globe. 
He's leading right now. I don't like that. An issue that is vital for Americans today is the decline in their purchasing power. At the same time, the government must seek new revenues to pay off its debt. Where do you stand on this matter? Um, increase salaries for teachers, reduce triple person. Uh, okay, I've already said increase the minimum wage. This is something people can get. Well, lower income taxes. That will make, that will make everyone happy. Uh, or expand and improve benefits for military veterans. Let's do that. That one is a good one. I will always stand up for those who have served. I will make great efforts to expand and improve benefits for veterans and their families. That's only this fair, I think. Access to health care, as well as the education and job opportunities that they deserve when they return home. Very well. Now it's your turn. What are your views on this subject? I propose a substantial cut to the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, also called the SNAP or Food Stamp Program. This program needs to be reformed as soon as possible. It needs to be made less expensive because it currently undermines our work ethic, and that's a fundamental tenet of American society. Thank you both. We've reached the end of our debate. In closing, we will hear one final statement from each of our candidates. Okay, now I have to sway them, final promise. but I'm in the lead now. Well, I think America must be strong on all fronts, given the multiple threats that we face today. So by increasing our annual naval ship... Yeah, yeah, you already said that. ...to 15 ships, I'll reverse the current... <laughs> He's of going Navy, senile. And as president, our Navy will shine as an unchallengeable power on the high seas. Okay, now I think I, I have a bit of time. Let's pick a good issue that's... Aww... That's just my alarm going off there again, uh, just to time the episodes. But I think let's, let's at least pick an issue and get this debate done with. Something that's going to, uh, uh, you know, be one of the standout things of my candidacy. Uh, power of the federal government, morality, North Korea. There's so many things we can speak about here. Human rights, what about that? Higher education, let's talk about education. Uh, students work when uh, offered tax credits. You see, I would like to say cancel all student loan debts, but that's not something I think the government can afford. I don't know. I, I'm Obviously, I'm not American, so I don't know all the issues there. But uh, at the very least, I would think that we can, uh, where was that thing now, offer a $10,000 tax credit to make higher education more affordable. I think that is at least what I can do. Well, I think the point is that higher education can't be a luxury. Higher education is something that every family needs to be able to afford. As part of my plan to make college more affordable, I propose a tax credit worth up to $10,000 to help families cover the cost of tuition. In closing, I would like to thank you both so for maintaining a civil discourse throughout this debate. I hope that our viewers were able to get a clearer picture of each candidate. It seems our instant survey system has meanwhile designated a winner for our debate this evening, something that may influence the results of the election this November 6th. Good night, everyone. Good night. Hopefully that influences the people. At least I won against Trump now. So it's 17th of October. Let's just have a look at the support now ac across the country. You see it's still very small, but at least now it's about 4% on on average per state. In California, we're at 16%, but New York, we're actually at 35 now. We're just behind the Republicans, so very soon we'll have a majority there. So I think New York will become our new headquarters or base of operations. Uh, yes, I'm thinking now, I should probably end this episode and then just continue on in the next one, instead of making one super long episode. So, I'm going to do that. I'll see you in the next episode, and then we'll continue. It's the 17th of October now, and hopefully I can still win this thing. Let's have a look. One thing is I want to, you know, make YouTube great again. <laughs> that would be a good campaign promise, but unfortunately I can't make that one. In any case, see you in the next episode. Thank you for watching. This is quite a bit of fun, you know, just a little out of the ordinary. So there we go. See you next time.